you doing? And uh, I appreciate you getting involved with Lily the Valley Orphanage. Thank you for listening here. My name is Ed Salo, and I'm the papa of Lily the Valley Orphanage in Aldama, and here the extension here in the mountains of Chihuahua in a town called Guachochi. And the Lord just called on my heart at the age of 31 to someday be a papa to orphan children and to start an orphanage. I asked the Lord to give me a wife. I said, Lord, I'm not a big macho man to go down and do something by myself as a single. And lo and behold, believe it or not, my future bride, my future wife, Rosa, was living only 20 yards away from me. My name is Rosa Salo. I began to pray that God would give me a husband because I was already 27 years old. I prayed that God would give me a husband that had the same vision, you know, of, of to, to go and, and, and rescue children that were destitute, children that were abandoned, children that were orphaned. And so uh, I prayed, I prayed, I fasted for seven years, you know, and God one day brought Ed into my life and it was, it was just like, that's it, you know, we knew. So this pretty Puerto Rican lady and I got married. Now we've been married 30 years and she's, uh, she deserves a medal for putting up with me. So we came here to a real dilapidated building. I mean, it was falling apart, a real old ranch. And so we began to fix it up. And that was April 14th of 1995. June, we began to accept children in. And since then, um, thousands of children have come through these doors and lives have been changed. I just want to give you a little bit of the idea of, of Lily of the Valley as, as the, the Lord laid it on our heart. It's based on kind of three main things I want to share with you. Uh, prayer, giving, and family. And Rose and I decided we really wanted to walk a walk by faith. So we very rarely, okay, ask people directly for any kind of financial contributions. We just basically let them know, like I'm doing in this video, about what the, the need of the orphan children in Mexico is all about. And we just trust God to touch you in, in any way you want to help. This is an amazing thing. Before I met Ed, Ed um, had already, um, God has spoken to him that it was going to be a, a, a faith walk like George Mueller, and it burned in his heart that we will never ask anybody for anything. We will pray. And I tell you one thing, it was very difficult. It was extremely difficult because the church, the sending church said we will support, but they found they couldn't support both, both orphanage. You know, it was, it was too much. And so we really had to trust the Lord. I mean, trust God for all the provision. So the house is based on prayer. The kids are taught to pray. Remember one day, I'll tell you another story real quickly. One day, about 10 years ago, it was a Saturday, not a cloud in the sky. We had enough food for breakfast, okay? And lunch was a stretch, maybe, 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 maybe not, whatever. And we started to pray. We were out working a little bit out on the grounds, out in the field, and Dad, man, that's hard for me to work, man. I mean, we just had a little bit of cereal. And I said, let's trust God, man. We just prayed, Lord, send us some food. Well, one o'clock in the afternoon, and like I said, and I don't like to exaggerate testimonies, but it's the truth. There was not a cloud in the sky. There was absolutely no way there could be a rainfall that day, okay? So at one o'clock, all kinds of cloud cover ugly rain clouds come over and totally blanket the sky. From one o'clock to 2.30, there was a most incredible rainstorm. If you would have told me at eight o'clock in the morning, Ed, at one o'clock in the afternoon, there's gonna be a rainstorm. I would have said, no way, there's just no way. So one to 2.30, there's a rainstorm. 2.30, the clouds pass over and the sun comes out again. Five minutes later, we see all kinds of trucks coming up to us opening up their, their doors, their gates, and inside these trucks and inside these, these vehicles are all kinds of hamburgers already made, cheeseburgers, delicious, big bats of, of, of delicious beans, already made, already, already cooked. And I go, where are you folks from? They said, we're from the Outtech factory. We had a picnic at the water park nearby. We have a water park near, nearby the house. 
And you know what happened? It rained out the picnic. Only 100 people showed up. And I said to Uncle Albert, the head of the water park, what are we going to do all this food? They said, take, here, I'm going to have my son take you over to Lily the Valley. We ate like kings for two days, and not only that, we were able to call and bless five other orphanages with all the hamburgers that we got. Isn't that something? God truly answers prayer. I mean, you come in, sometimes you come into some pretty, uh, come and see, say, difficult situations, right? Hairy situations, you know? But God answers prayer. Number two, Lily is based on giving. You know, we tell the kids, sure, we're an orphanage and we have needs and we need to receive, but we tell the kids to give. We like to go to visit a local family which is, has three children that are all handicapped, the local convalescent home, the orphanages nearby, rehabilitation centers nearby, and we like to give out food and needs. We even have a little missionary fund that we have to help missionaries all over, all over the world, and the kids give their little pesos from there. Of everything that God gives us, if it's financially, when American groups come, and we always say, uh, uh, can you give us permission to give a 10% out of this? And we, we, we give. We give to other orphanages. We give, in, we give in to 25 different countries um, financial help to missionaries. We give out food. You know, we go we go to the nursing homes and we take Ed. Ed does all that. He takes the children to sing and he takes them to um, to give them juice and to give them love. You can you you cannot give God. I tell the kids, let's have a game, kids. Let's have a competition with God. Let's see if we can give out to the poor more quickly and more than God gives to us, because He says. Given it shall be given unto you, okay? And, 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 and the kid says, come on, God, come on, Dad, let's have a competition with God. And after something like this happens, they look at me with big eyes and they say, Dad, God won again. And it's true. So we really teach the kids on giving. And I'm really proud of my kids that they are our givers, okay? And they learn how to give. One of my desire is to start a food bank. We already have the building, you know? And so it's already in effect because uh, we give out beans, we give out everything that God gives, we give, we give, we give. Number three, the house is based on family, okay? My, my name of the kids, and it's my honor and my wife's name, my name is Papa, Papa Ed, they call me Papa Lalo, or most of them just call me Papa. They call Mama, Mama Rosita, my wife. And we have never had our own children never had them and, and don't want them because it's our calling. Rosa says, not only don't, don't you want them, we can't have them now unless it's Abraham and Sarah because Rosa's 65 now and I'm coming 63. But the, the thing that we try to do is try to promote the house of family. The other workers, all right, they call them brothers or sisters, aunts and uncles, Tia Eva, Aunt Eva and everything, and it's Papa Ed. What we do is, at least two times a day, in the morning and the night, we have what's called hug line, where the kids come and get embraced because they're so hungry for love. And I say, I love you with a papa love, all right? I tell the girls, you're beautiful. I love you with a papa love. And they say to me, thank you for being my father. And I say, thank you for me and my daughter. It's our dream. It's our dream and our vision. And we impart this to the children. This is why we take them like a short mission trip into Chihuahua, you know. It's our dream that they either become missionaries, they follow, you know, or they will continue to follow and build all the orphanages in different places, wherever God will lead them. Because God spoke to Ed and said, 95% of your dreams would not be fulfilled from, with you. It will be your children who will fulfill those dreams. So very briefly, my wife and I made a special trip to Guachochi one day. We met with Child Protective Services and we said, how would you feel? We've been praying about this. How would you feel if we started a home and extension here in Guachochi? They loved it. They jumped at the idea. They said that would be perfect. That would help our problems of, of logistics and transportation. So we prayed and the local government gave us a beautiful piece of land, several acres with pine trees and everything. Now we face needs for this new home in Guachochi. 
We have 20 children. The home has a capacity of 60. We now have five workers, so we do need more staff, both in Aldama and here in the mountains, okay? So pray, please, for more staff, for more full-time workers. One of those, mo the money doesn't buy love. Money doesn't buy love. But when short mission teams come, they, they give a lot of love to the children. They get a lot of love. They get a lot of hugs. And what is our dream? Our dream is these kids to love God, to love Jesus, to serve Mexico, and to be really people that are gonna be good moms and dads, not living in the streets, not living in need. You impact, you don't know how much impact you have on the lives of one of these children. That's why I love and, and I want you know, I wish I could have all year round mission uh, trips. People that will come from the U.S. and love on the children and pray and play with them and just be with them.